I hope you're having a great day. Well, today we're going to talk about a simple, super powerful probiotic that each and every one of us can make in our own homes and start consuming it right away. You see, we live in a country, India, where we have so much, so much of traditional wisdom when it comes to yoga, when it comes to traditional foods, when it comes to our spices, when it comes to our grains. And you know, we have this concept. I mean, I have nothing against the West. There is so much that we've learned from the West. But we need to start learning more from our own country as well. We should respect every civilization and every culture around the world. But what happens is in India, we have this typical mentality that if it doesn't come from the West, we don't believe in it. We don't do it. And we try to ape the West constantly to the extent that so many of us are spending thousands and thousands of, uh, of rupees on probiotics and all of these things, which are honestly, they may be necessary when you have sickness. They may be necessary when you're going through heavy medication. But other than that, you have probiotics in the most easiest ways possible. And we don't even have to spend money on things like this. If we really look into the wisdom of our own country, if we look into Ayurveda, when we take wisdom from the things that, you know, basically go back to our roots, we'll find out that our health can get better in the most inexpensive way possible. Today, the probiotic that I want to talk about, it exists across several, several states in our own country. And the thing is, when we post this, everyone says, oh, it's called this and this language and that and that state. Great, you have that knowledge, but why aren't you using it? Why are you constantly looking for fancy packed packages or with great packaging and only looking at advertisements that you see on billboards and magazines for probiotics with 25 billion whatever and stuff like that? It's not necessary. You can get the same results using two simple ingredients, white rice and water. So you see today in our world, everything, everything is sold by inducing fear in people. You know, there are diets out there like ketogenic diets. I have nothing against these things, but the common, the common sense question that we need to ask ourselves, do I really need it? Why should I need a keto diet? Does this mean that if I'm, if I'm not on a keto diet, I'm going to be diabetic? No, you're diabetic because you have a poor lifestyle. You're diabetic because you're sedentary. You're diabetic because you don't know how to eat right and you don't know how to, how, you know, when to zip your mouth shut. It's as simple as that. These are disciplinary issues. You don't need an extreme diet. You don't need an extreme diet to solve your lifestyle problems or your disciplinary problems. It's as simple as that. But you see, we get attached to fads like, oh, this diet, because half the world is doing it. And then we see a few great bodies that are built with a keto diet and we think we're gonna get the same body with that keto diet. If you get 100 people on a keto diet right now, all of them are gonna have different bodies. All of them, not all of them are gonna have great bodies and great physiques. Some of them are gonna have okay bodies. Some of them would have lost weight. But the point is, the point is, use the diet only if you have to, but correct your lifestyle, add some discipline. You don't have to do extremes. The same thing with probiotics and supplements. Now, what you need to do, let's understand how this works as a super powerful probiotic. And then, you know, you realize how much of money you're wasting in buying all of these probiotics from different countries. A great probiotic is a resistant starch. A resistant starch again has a bad name because we think starch, the world's made us believe that starch means weight gain. Starch means more body fat. It's far from that. The word resistant starch means that this particular starch resists digestion in the human body. It has more of a mechanical impact on the human body. So when we consume a resistant starch, it travels onto our body, it resists digestion, it goes straight through our intestines into our colon. Now here's where the magic happens. This resistant starch starts feeding the friendly bacteria in our colon and intestines. We have a field, that's your microbiome. You have the ecology of your gut. Think of it as a field. In this field, you have good bacteria and you have bad bacteria, several thousands of strains. As long as the good bacteria is more than the bad bacteria, you have a good balance of gut health. The moment your bad bacteria is more than your good bacteria, that's when you start having gut problems, right? From IBS to colitis to autoimmune disorders, psoriasis, eczema, lupus, Hashimoto's thyroid, the list goes on and on. Poor skin, poor hair, bloating, flatulence, indigestion, acidity. It just goes on and on. Just something like the, micro, the microflora of your gut is slightly upset and you allow more bad bacteria than good bacteria. You have all of these problems. 
Now all of these problems in the medical world can have one tablet or one drug for each of them at a symptomatic level. I'm not saying that's wrong. I said at a symptomatic level. But if you want to heal at a root cause level, it's as simple as balancing the flora of your gut, which means balancing the good and bad bacteria in your gut. Most people who have sugar cravings throughout the day, basically crazy sugar cravings, you need to understand that your bad bacteria is more than your good bacteria. And what does your bad bacteria feed on? Your bad bacteria feeds on sugar and simple refined carbohydrates. So when it's hungry and it needs to grow, it's going to create a craving so that you eat that kind of food and you will, will eat that kind of food. And then you'll start this vicious cycle of feeding your bad bacteria. And now your bad bacteria grows more than the good bacteria. This bad bacteria pokes holes into your intestinal lining, making your intestinal pores larger and larger. And now you have undesirable molecules and antibodies moving from your gut into your blood, a place it's never supposed to be. And because it's in your blood where it's not supposed to be, your immune system wakes up and starts attacking it. And that could lead to your psoriasis, your Hashimoto's thyroid, hair fall, lupus, you know, innumerable multiple sclerosis some kinds of cancers so many things and all you need to do is heal that gut lining make sure that those holes resume their original size and that's what a leaky gut syndrome is and all because your bad bacteria grew more than your good bacteria so that's where probiotics and prebiotics come in prebiotics and probiotics is a science you can't just go popping it crazily and upsetting the entire microbiome of your gut you need prebiotics you need probiotics so that you can balance your gut microbiome in the perfect way possible let's go back to this resistant starch which is nothing but leftover cooked rice you know you need leftover cooked rice which is cooled and then you put it in a little clay pot or a mud pot and you cover it with water you know you cover the rice with water and you cover it you leave it overnight it ferments in the morning you take a spoon of that rice you can take two spoons of the rice and that water and that acts as one of the most super powerful probiotics you can ever have and not too many companies are going to be happy hearing this because it literally challenges all the probiotics on the shelves and in supplement countries and pharmaceuticals and all of that stuff but we have some of the best results with people only using leftover cool rice soaked overnight and their gut issues are getting better and better and better. It's not going to be the only thing that solves your gut issue. There's also going to be your lifestyle changes, the way you eat, your exercise, your sleep, your stress, which impacts your intestinal walls as well. Let's move back further into the science of how this works. So the resistant starch comes down into your colon where it starts feeding the friendly bacteria, which means your good bacteria now has more food to overgrow the bad bacteria. It produces something called butyrate, I'm sorry, called butyrate acid. Now we spoke about butyric acid in ghee. Basically, even when you consume ghee, which is why ghee is so good for our gut, which is why even Ayurveda uses ghee as a medicine for indigestion and gut problems. Because when ghee reaches your intestines, it breaks down into butyric acid. Now, what is the function of butyric acid? To reduce inflammation, the root cause of every problem, most problems in the human body. Diabetes, inflammatory disease, cardiovascular, inflammatory disease, most cancers, all cancers, inflammatory disease, gut issues, inflammatory problems. So now when you reduce this inflammation because you're automatically producing butyric acid, it basically helps your autoimmune disorders, it helps Crohn's, it helps IBS, it helps colitis, it helps you with allergies. Most people who have allergies today, you're popping anti-allergy pills, that's fine, do it if you need to, but look at the root cause. Start creating butyric acid using ghee, using resistant starches, good probiotics in your gut, so you can reduce inflammation at a gut level because all of us know that 85, 75 to 85% of your immune system starts in your gut. So you want to be looking at your gut. No amount of moringa powder, no amount of pumpkin seeds, goji berries, and all of that stuff is going to boost your immunity if your gut is not working the right way. Because the assimilation and absorption of all the good foods that you're eating will happen through your gut wall. And if your gut wall is not proper, like I said, those foods are useless. Now, when you have a problem with your gut wall, you have a problem with absorption. So some people who find it very difficult to put on weight, they may just not be absorbing the right vitamins. Let's talk about the health of your hair. The good bacteria produces key vitamins like biotin. We all know bi biotin is a B vitamin that is responsible and essential for the quality of your hair. Now, biotin, vitamin K and folic acid, folates are produced by the good bacteria in your gut. 
So if you don't have the right bacteria in your gut, you can't produce these vitamins which are essential for your hair, your skin, and so many other metabolic functions in the human body, which means you have a deficiency now. And you can go on popping these vitamins, but you still need to fix the gut. You still need the right bacteria that is involved in producing and synthesizing these vitamins that are crucial for your health, your hair, your immunity, and everything else. The good bacteria also helps you to break down toxins in the colon and in the intestines and helps them eliminate them. So you need this good bacteria for so many functions, detoxification. You can go to the most fanciest and expensive spa across the world, but if you don't treat the root cause, which is your gut, there are so many people who do these cologne hydrotherapy you know, solutions where they flush out your entire gut. We should understand that that should be probably done once in your lifetime, but it's sold like candy. Every time you do that procedure, you're flushing out not just the bad bacteria, but also the good bacteria. And it takes months and months until you can regenerate and repopulate the, the, the entire microbiome. We shouldn't have to go through all these artificial procedures when we can do it with our basic foods that are available. You see, God or the higher power designed our bodies to repair, to heal, to detoxify naturally. It's the world outside there that built everything around it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to a spa and you shouldn't do detoxification. Do it, it's great for us, but understand that the best detoxification is the detoxification that your own body can do for you. So don't compromise your own detoxification abilities in your body by thinking something external is gonna beat everything that can be naturally done by our own body. Now. When, uh, let me see if I missed out any points. Yes, so we need to understand that we need to have more, bad back, more of the good bacteria. When we have more of the good bacteria through probiotics, resistant starches, having good gut health, the bad bacteria is lesser. We still need the bad bacteria. And basically more good bacteria will help us also fight pathogens and germs and you know any bacteria that get into our system, which is your immune system. It's as simple as that. Now, before you go crazy over resistant starches, understand that too much of fiber is also bad for you. So you wanna start having a little bit. I would start by maybe a teaspoon of this and move up to a tablespoon or even two tablespoons. Now, resistant starch just doesn't come in this form. You find it in green bananas as well. You find it in something called potato starch. Now, potato starch and potato flour are two different things. You can get both potato starch on Amazon and several companies. Basically, potato starch is nothing but the starch of the potato that is dehydrated. So if you're traveling and you know you can't make your cooked rice and soak it overnight, you can have a tablespoon of potato starch mixed in water and it works like a resistant starch. So you know if you have gut issues, this is something that you can carry with you if you cannot do the rice. So you see, everything is possible. Like I always say, we either have an excuse why we can't do it, and that's why we have problems, or we can always find simple ways on how we can improve our gut health. So if you're intermittent fasting and dry fasting, whenever you break your fast, you have your water, you can have your fruit, and then you can have your resistant starch. Or some days you can omit the fruit and you can put the resistant starch or the rice directly into your empty stomach because it is soft fermented food. In fact, your gut will use it far better when it's on an empty stomach. So something as simple as this, this is not my idea. This is from the wisdom of our own country and several other countries. The Philippines does this, Thailand does this. A lot of countries in Southeast Asia does this fermented rice overnight as a great probiotic. These are the simple things. And how much is this gonna cost you? Technically nothing, because you all, most of us will have rice at home. And all those people who think rice is bad and rice makes you fat and rice causes diabetes, change your mindset. Rice doesn't cause, you cause disease. The problem is not food, the problem is the person. Like I always say, the per problem is the person. If you've been overeating rice, not combining it with the right lentils, have a sedentary lifestyle, you eat a heavy meal like rice and you go straight to sleep, that is the reason why you're sick. That is the reason why you have a lifestyle disease, not because of rice. We have farmers across the country, thousands and thousands of them, but their staple diet is rice. They're not sick. Most of them are not sick. Most of them are not fat. You know, we can't blame our fatness and our weight on foods like this, which feeds thousands of people across the country and they have no illness at all. We need to look at our lifestyle, how lazy we are how sedentary we are, how stressed we are, how sleep deprived we are, and how much of crap processed food we're putting into our system. And that is the truth, and the truth always hurts. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.